Hey, my name is Ross Omari, founder of sqsp-themes.com, a resource and community for entrepreneurs building a business on Squarespace. Today, we're going to be talking about Squarespace SEO, everything you need to know um, in one short video. Um, there's a lot of talk about the SEO limitations of Squarespace, and we'll touch on that. Um, but really, the purpose of this video is to focus on the essentials, um, the question of whether or not Squarespace is good for SEO. It's great for SEO if you understand the principles, um, what really matters, and how to apply them. So let's jump right in. Um, I'm using one of the default templates here for this demonstration, and it's the Friendly Neighborhood Handyman. Um, and so we're going to optimize around handyman. And one of the first things I always advise is to um, take a look at what what's showing up for that search right now. So I'm in Connecticut. So handyman CT, you've got a bunch of um, paid ads right here, and then you jump into your map. And so one of the first things we would want to do is to list the business with Google Business or um, Google My Business, and we'll be able to have our um, site listed here um, and to get some reviews from some of our customers and clients. Um, and then scrolling down to our organic links here, we can see um, you've got Yelp, you've got Mr. Handyman, you've got some local um, handyman services. And this looks like you know, these are the people who we'd be competing with. And then if we look at this um, keyword tool here, this is a free keyword tool called Uber Suggest. Looking at Handyman CT, we can see it gets uh, a relatively low search volume of 170 searches per month. Um, but if, you know, if you can capture 5% of those and turn them into clients, you're looking at eight or nine clients a month uh, for your handyman business. So it's definitely worth optimizing for. Um, and those are some conservative conservative numbers or estimates there. Um, and then you can also see, you know, what the volume is like for related keywords, handyman and CT, uh, Stanford, Connecticut, CT handyman services, um, et cetera. So jumping back, we're going to dive into the site settings that we can uh, tweak here. And so I'm going to go to our settings. And the first thing is you've got your business information, which I would definitely recommend you input that in. Uh, so we'll say handyman LLC, business address, contact, phone number, uh, physical location if it exists. And it should be the, the, the exact same address um, as you use for your for your Google business listing. All right. And then um, you've also got basic information here as well, which um, serves as just your site description. There's not much SEO benefit there. However, it's good to fill it out. And then you've got your SEO settings. So um, I advise people to leave this empty. Um, I'll show you where to put your, your meta description for your homepage in a minute. And then the reason also why you want to keep this empty is so that you can apply unique um, meta descriptions for each page and not have any, any conflicts. Um, if you do use this, what happens is it becomes the, the default um, meta description for all of the pages on your site, which if you forget to do it, um, you know, it just looks like you've got one fixed static description for all of the pages, which isn't accurate. Um, best practice is you want to have uh, unique descriptions that actually describe what's on the page. All right. Then you've got your homepage title format. So by default, this is just going to say um, handyman, which is our site title. But because we want to focus on uh, the area that we're in, we can call this, uh, you know, Connecticut handyman services. All 
All right. Um, and then you take a look at our page title format. Um, you'll see again, you've got your site title here and then whatever the page title is will show up, um, will show up right there in the, the page title. And then collection title. So these are your blog posts. Um, and again, it will be the post title and then the site title. Now, if you've got multiple blogs for some reason, maybe you're, you've got an e-commerce site um, and you've got multiple shop collections. In that case, you might want to add uh, the, is it the S? No, not the S, the P. There you go. And what this does is this will show um, your product name, the product collection, and then the site title. So that's useful for an e-commerce perspective. So let's hit save. And let's keep going. So if you go to your blog and settings, you can change this post URL format from this long date post title thing to just the post title. All right. And then scroll down here. You want to enable AMP accelerated mobile pages and then finally um, if you take a look at your security and SSL you want to turn this on and enable this um, for your SEO because that is a ranking factor and then finally um, URL mappings so if we were migrating from, you know, another uh, website platform. We would want to make sure that we've mapped all of the URLs from our old site to the new site. And finally, um, let's take a look. Okay, we just did advanced. All right, so now let's jump on over to our pages and now we're going to take a look at our page title and page descriptions so this is in this home page is an index page and the question often comes up what do i do about these sub pages i don't want them to get indexed so what you can do is you can add a meta no index tag to these sub pages and you would add that here underneath your advanced settings. Um, and I'll, I'll link to a post underneath this video so that you can get that code. Um, and then so for your index page settings, you've got your page title here, which you can optimize and say, you know, um, handyman something another. Handyman, blah. Um, and then, you know, find out why. Where the best in CT. And they might say, you know, serve in Fairfield County, Hartford County, Litchfield County. Hit save. Um, and so again, you might want to no index these sub pages. And then you can also leave them as is. If, if there's content on these pages that can live on their own, um, then you can just leave them. And if Google indexes them, that's fine. However, if the, the content is thin and it's not really worth anything by itself, then <clears throat> you don't want to have those there. And then for your regular pages, similarly, it's the same thing. You want to um, optimize your page title to be uh, somewhat descriptive. Now, you don't want to go overboard and, you know, stuff too many keywords or do that, anything like that. You just want to be straight up and tell the search engine, hey, here's what this page is about. Um, you know, add a description here to, to kind of go through what this page is about, two or three sentences. Um, and that's it. It's very simple. Um, Squarespace automatically generates a site map. Let's take a look at that. Site map dot XML. Um, 
Okay, so hasn't been generated yet because this is a demo site that we're just testing out. But it automatically generates a site map and a robots.txt file. So you don't have to worry about creating those yourself. Um, the, the templates for the most part are SEO friendly. There are some templates where when you add the page description that surfaces on the actual template itself, which, um, you know, it, it, it's probably not something that you want, but you might not have a problem with it. Um, what else is there? And then you, you also notice that when you enter your meta description, it's, it's pretty much simplified where you know, the same thing that you're using for the page title. See if there's a blog. Let's check out a blog. Um, is the same, same title as the blog, for example. So when I do a blog post, the, the title of the blog is the same as the title of the page. So with other platforms, you can have a different title just for SEO purposes than the actual title of the post. I actually think that this way, even though it forces you to simplify um, and, you know, have one, just have one post that actually um, helps the search engine and helps the people at the same time. It's more challenging because you can't just have a dry, you know, SEO optimized title and then a fun human optimized title. You just have to have one, um, but that's fine. So we'll just call this title one. And then, so if you jump over to your options here, you can simplify your post URL and just, you know, let's say we just want to call that T and then your excerpt, what you add down here, this becomes the meta description for that blog. Really simple. Yeah. You can also add tags and categories, and this is more so to help uh, the user experience so that if you decide to, let's say, surface all of the posts under one category, you can do that. Um, you can use summary blocks to, to create custom pillar pages or pages that are category pages. Um, yeah, so I think I've covered most of the, the major topics of what you need to know for Squarespace SEO. Um, if you have any questions on something specific, um, wherever it may be, uh, leave a comment um, or you can join us in the Squarespace SEO round table on Facebook. Um, yeah. All right. Take care. Peace.